Good morning, traders. Welcome to Privateer FX. Asian preview for the first trading day of June, but last trading day of the week. We finished the month off on a, a decent note, which is good because the, the early part of May was a bit tricky for us, but uh, been able to capture some pips here in the last couple of weeks with the heightened volatility. Um, take a look at our Euro longs. We got in down near 115.80. Uh, it got up to 117.25 today. This seems to be a pretty good resistance level, somewhere between 25 and 117.50. Um, we're going to hang on. Uh, Let's get to the hourly. You can see uh, we were expecting, uh, we talked about it yesterday, we were expecting uh, some euro and cable, like a dollar sell fix basically today at month end. And uh, it looks like they did it in London. If you see here on the uh, on the open, here's a London open right here at uh, 8 a.m. They had the big buy up from, you know, maybe even started pre pre-London. Looks like they bought it up and then you see some red bars and you know, a lot of jockeying around here and then on the actual fix we just had one big wide wide bar pushed down here. Then there were some positive developments out of Italy where the Le La Liga and Five Star have completed an accord on the coalition government. Um, they're naming some ministers. Sounds like things are going a bit better there. So there should be support of Euro and, um, you know, the Euro crosses. On the flip side, we had Ross speaking. Um, I think it was uh, the House Ways and Means Chairman Brady says Mexico, Canada and Europe are not the problem. China is. Um, this is coming after uh in reaction to the tariffs that the U.S. are going to impose on uh, Europe and Canada and uh, Mexico. So, you know, the bottom line is, you know, we don't have issues with our main trading partners or our, our trading allies, I'd like to call them. Um, China, on the other hand, you know, is a, is a bigger issue. But anyhow... We, Trump did mention that the tariffs on the metals um, will be going into effect at midnight tonight. And I think that's kind of why the equity market struggled. Um, take a look at the S&P is closed down at 27.07. Let's take a look at the, get to the daily. Let's we'll look through some of the equity markets. Inside bar. Nothing too exciting, um, but you know, even with like the Italian, the positive news out of Italy, it was offset by some of this uh, tariff news from Trump. Again, he's just playing hardball. Oil inventories came out today, a day later than normal because of the holiday on Monday. Uh, there was a draw. Uh, I think they were expecting a small build and oil shot up, got back up to 68.15 after the inventory number. But this is still in a firm, you know, here you look at the MACDs that crossed over that, you know, that call it pretty much ping the top. And we've had that, you know, decent 5% sell off. <clears throat> it's hanging around this old, uh, these old highs, this breakout. And, uh, can't really we closed on it. we can't really close below it i think if we do get a close here there's no, no doubt that we're going to 6520 the 100 day you know maybe a deeper pull back down to 62 somewhere around there um so you know overall uh nasdaq's actually kind of an interesting chart it closed like basically unchanged on the day we're also hanging around this three-quarter fibo which we pierced and we have not, we've closed on it yesterday, closed just below it today. This is a big inflection point here and we're starting to get <clears throat> long in the tooth of this rally. So 
looks like the momentum indicators are, you know, it's kind of running out of gas, this rally. Um, I would pay close attention to NASDAQ, S&Ps. Uh, you know, here's the Nikkei. Here's the Nikkei cash. Hold on. Here's the Nikkei futures. You know, came off these highs. Getting close, you know, not, not too far from the 200-day moving average. Those crossed over up here at the highs. So equities are looking like they could roll over. Again, the S&P rolled over a couple days ago on that big down day. That was the Italy concerns. So even though Italy is, things are turning more favorable, the, the, the news is more favorable out of Italy, we still have these tariffs with the, our European, Canada, and Mexico trading partners that might be weighing on, on uh, the equity prices. Uh, you can take a look at dollar CAD. Had a big up reversal up day. We, we did uh, um, we did have a big move up early in New York, even though those the tariff announcement was kind of old news. And once New York got in, they decided they wanted to buy dollar CAD and dollar max. Dollar max made a new high for the year today at 2005. Close down at 2090. So again, it's you know some of this risk-off type um, dollar EM moves, which saw what happened in Turkey the last couple of weeks. Here's dollar max, you know, new highs for 2018. Um, the old high was in December 26 at 1990 and we closed pretty much in 1990 so it's not a new high daily close for the year but it, it did make a new high the high daily close is 1993 right here that was in early may so we got a new new calendar month the last month of the quarter uh seasonally it's uh, not a great month for oil so we're maintaining our oil shorts we're keeping some euro longs um Kiwi to me has ha has been the best performer over the past four or five days. Uh, I think we're due for a pullback there. Um, there's a daily Kiwi, you know, still another another up bar, but you know maybe we get a squeeze up to seventy sixty. I'd be looking to sell that, and you, you know if we if we get up to this hundred day moving average and. Uh, what is it, the half fib, 71.20 to 30. I think that's a really nice area right in here to um, to sell some uh, Kiwi. Let's see if I can get a, let's see if I can get here, this little area right in here. Put that one on your radar, 70, 71.25, 30. I think that'd be a great sale half retracement after you know the dollar had a really strong may and we we do like we like dollar shorts kind of within the for the next couple of weeks but uh and then i think we're the market will be surprised by more dollar strength and uh i don't think people are positioned properly for that so you know, playing the dollar weakness card for a, a couple more weeks. Dollar yen, just a lot of indecision the last couple of days after that big down move and down to the 100-day uh, moving average. So not really playing there. Uh, Aussie yen, still short that. I'd like to see another test of these lows down at 81. Uh, this bar, this green bar is a little concerning short but uh, that should pretty much do it we got Caxon uh, PMI number out of China we have uh, and then of course tomorrow we have the US non-farm payrolls the market will be paying attention to the employment rate and the wage data which is expected plus 0.2 so we think if we can get an inline wage number and NFP um, you know, maybe you'll see a little bit of dollar buying, dollar yen 
stays kind of perky here on the high 108s. Um, if we get weaker headline and weaker wage data, dollar yen actually would probably be a good sale. And uh, some of these short term euro shorts might get taken out to the top side. Um, you know, we got targets up at 117.50. So 117.30 would be kind of the break trade, and then we get some old highs here. Uh, old low at 117.22, which is pretty much the high today. There's definitely some room to correct in that on a weaker number. Anyhow, I've spoken long enough. Uh, have a great weekend, and you'll hear from us in the European Open. Cheers.